in 2005, Mike Shinoda released the album The Rising Tide, which produced tons of classic songs from my childhood, specifically Remember the Name and Kenji. And recently, I decided to go back to it and listen to that album, and the song Kenji really stuck with me again. But this time, I understood more what it was talking about. If you haven't listened to it, why are you watching this video? Listen to the song first, and then come back and watch this video. Okay, for anyone that's too stubborn to do that, Kenji is a song about one of Mike Shinoda's relatives and their time being imprisoned in Japanese internment camps in the USA. And after looking into the song a bit, I was curious on how accurate is this portrayal of life of a Japanese American in the 1940s. So we will go through what Shinoda says in the song and then compare it to real life. The song starts with an interview that Mike did with his father, where his father gives some semblance to the listener that what Mike says in the song is very accurate, and we're gonna look to see if that's true. The first bit of the first verse is just background to, to the character Kenji. He then goes on to say that people would call him immigrant, but he would call himself Issei, meaning first generation in Japanese. Whew. He then goes on to explain that it was a very tense time in the US, but it was especially tense with Japan. The US did have many reasons to be on bad terms with Japan, to put it lightly. They were against their expansionist policies as they seized parts of China and the entirety of what is now Vietnam. They were in the middle of sanctioning Japan and running them out of oil, and Japan had accidentally sunk the USS Panay. And all of these factors worried the American population that Japan were going to retaliate with a homeland attack. The media also propagated the idea that Japan was going to attack by printing headlines suggesting it in, on the fronts of newspapers. Shinoda then states that Kenji sees on front page news that Japan has attacked the US and they're printing pictures of soldiers dying and running on the front of newspapers. And the question is, did they actually print pictures of soldiers dying and running on the front of newspapers? And the answer is kind of harder than you would think. It also somewhat depends on your definition. For soldiers dying, there are pictures like this where there are huge explosions and you can assume there are people dying inside but you cannot directly see them. And for soldiers running, pictures of soldiers running away from Pearl Harbor definitely exist, but I could not find any of them on the fronts of newspapers. The next thing Shinoda quotes is the president saying, the evil Japanese in our home country will be locked away. However, I was unable to find any evidence of Franklin Roosevelt ever saying this. He most likely just said this to emphasize the situation that Japanese people were in. Then Shinoda goes on to state that the government orders the Japanese people that they are going to be forcibly removed from their homes in a couple of days, so they must pack all of their belongings into just two bags or a suitcase. The actual line used by the government was packing only that which can be carried by the family or the individual. There wasn't actually a restriction on the amount of bags or suitcases that a person could bring as long as they could carry all of them. And the main reason the government signed Executive Order 9066 was that they had a fear of national security and they were worried about Japanese Americans that might still be loyal to Japan and could act as potential spies. So now Kenji is at Manzanar and he's talking to his family about how you don't want to look at the soldiers because you might get shot. And it, it's true, Japanese internment camps were surrounded in tall walls watchtowers, and also barbed wire, so running wasn't really an option. However, a fear of getting shot was a concern. While I couldn't find much on people trying to escape, I did find that there was the Manzanar riot, and as an attempt to disperse the crowd, the military ended up firing into the crowd of about 2,000 people, instantly killing one of them and another person died from their injuries. So being shot at was definitely a concern in the camps. Internment camps had a problem with overcrowding. Okay, a problem is probably an understatement. It got to the point where the Secretary of the Interior, Harold L. Ix, wrote, The situation in at least some of the Japanese internment camps is bad and, and becoming worse rapidly, in a letter to the president. And Manzner, at its peak, held around 11,070 people in its 
814 acre area or about 1.1278 square miles. And to put that in perspective, if you took that population density, that area and made it a country, it would be the sixth most dense country in the world, right, ne right behind Gibraltar and Hong Kong. First two starts with a couple bars describing topics we have already discussed, as well as things his ancestors were just trying to do to stay alive. Japanese Americans were allowed to join the army, and many did it to escape the internment camps and to prove that they were true Americans even though a lot of them were Nisei. Throughout World War II, an estimated 33,000 Amer Japanese Americans served in the US military during World War II, of which 20,000 of them joined the army, and approximately 800 of them were killed in action. Here, Shinoda says that the 15 kiloton blast is what put an end to the war. Japan gave two reasons for surrendering. To the Japanese public, Emperor Hirohito said, moreover, the enemy has begun to employ a new and most cruel bomb, the power of which to do damage indeed is incalculable, taking a toll on many innocent lives. Should we continue to fight, not only would it result in the collapse and obliteration of the Japanese nation, but it, it would also lead to the total extinction of the human race. Claiming that their, their surrender was out of fear for the extinction of the human race, but he gave a different explanation to the Japanese military. In his speech delivered to the officers and men of the Imperial forces, he claims that the reason for the surrender is that the Soviet Union is declaring war on Japan as well, and they would not be able to fight it if they wanted to stay as their Imperial nation. But to be honest, all of this is a little wordy for a bar, so I kind of get why Mike Shinoda would just use the explanation that the Emperor gave to the Japanese public. Mike Shinoda gave a great explanation on this line on Genius.com. He said, My family came to the US with nothing. By the end of the 1930s, they had one of the most successful businesses in town, a general store slash barber shop slash gas station slash pool hall. And during internment, they were forcibly removed from it, where it was left for years to decay and subjected to vandalism. When they returned from the war, it was unusable. They were forced to sell it and became minimum wage farmhands. No one wanted to hire the Japanese in America at that time. My family were subjected to racism at every turn, even though they were proud American citizens the entire time. And this was a harsh truth for many of the Japanese people returning from the internment camps. Even though they had done nothing wrong, the government had turned its people against their own citizens, causing massive amounts of vandalism and racism towards the Japanese people. This fitting end to the song just reinforces what he is telling as a true story of his ancestors and, this, and that this is their story. And from what I've talked about in this video, I have to agree. He told an almost completely true story with only a couple small discrepancies. Thank you for watching. This is a super fun and interesting video to make and I'd really appreciate if you just told a friend about it. And if you know other songs that you would like me to look at or feel like giving me some constructive criticism, Comment down below.